There is no enterprise in this country as badly managed as the federal government. It is simply astonishing. And we're back in the Heritage Green Room today with retired General uh, Barry McCaffrey. Thank you so much for joining us, sir, on behalf of all of Heritage. Thank you very much for your selfless service to this country. Good to be with you. So in terms of looking at American foreign policy right now, what are some of the greatest risks the United States is facing today? Well, you know, I don't think we know what we're doing. Uh, that's part of the problem. The, the whole goal of a strategy ought to be to look forward 15 to 25 years and understand where you'll be and what are the threats you need to counter and then to construct uh, a conceptual framework that will address that and then from that develop diplomatic and military measures. I don't think we've got that. We've got some sort of glib notions of pivoting toward the Pacific and uh, I think what we know is we're trying to get out of Afghanistan and close down counterinsurgency operations in the Middle East. But, so we've got to sit down and think through what do we want to uh, do in the coming generation. And we, that's a debate. Congress, the media, the American people, and their elected representatives. Mm -hmm. So how do we go about putting that framework in place? And what are some of the obstacles that have kept us from doing that so far? Well, part of it's a 24-hour <clears throat> news cycle. And, you know, I think what happens is the debate in Washington tends to be cyclical on about a 48-hour basis. Uh, but the issues we're talking about is how are we going to deal with the Chinese uh, people in, in the coming uh, generation? They're going to create a global navy. We know that. Uh, so, and, that and we ought to expect that. We ought to, to some extent, accept it. But that means we ought to have the diplomatic and economic and military measures in place to deter mischief uh, when my granddaughter is a two-star admiral. And that requires uh, a, a conceptual architecture. You simply have to have a framework upon which you place your programs and your budgets uh, which currently is not the case. And when we look at some of the risks that the United States <clears throat> military and just policy in general is facing today, what are we least prepared to tackle? Well, you know, one thing, we've got the most competent, battle-hardened, uh, capable armed forces in the country's history. And we ought to remind ourselves periodically, there's 2.3 million of them, and they're globally deployed in 5,000 different locations. They're a very competent, capable force. Uh, but, you know, part of looking toward the future, General Powell used to tell us all when we were young guys, don't tell me about your programs, tell me about your budgets. So the question is, do we have a, sort of an, an understanding financially of how we're going to spend scarce resources a decade into the future? Again, the answer is no. Sequestration, continuing resolutions. Congress essentially hasn't passed a budget on time, 12 appropriations bills in seven years. They're not doing their job. And without that, uh, you're just cobbling together programmatic decisions. Right. And that's a good point. I kind of wanted to segue into that financial economic look. Mm -hmm. When you look at things like budget cuts, when you look at things like sequestration, how will some of that defense budget cut um, affect what the United States is capable of doing and national security kind of across the board? Well, you know, I spent the last 10 years in business and big businesses like DynCor and little businesses. Uh, that are, you know, for profit. There is no enterprise in this country as badly managed as the federal government. It is simply astonishing. Uh, sequestration uh, was, uh, if you do it in the short run, uh, and if you say you can't uh, get rid of infrastructure, you can't have a BRAC process, you can't fire military people in, in a given fiscal year, you end up taking it all out of maintenance funds and, and uh, training uh, operational funds. And you're still fighting a war, so you have to fund the war. Then continuing resolutions, as you know, as most of the people viewing this tape, a continuing resolution says you can only spend on the programs and at the same rate as last year's budget. A lot of those programs no longer make any sense, and new programs have appeared. So it, to some extent, it's a mindless kind of mechanical process that is devastating the capability of our armed forces to react in the longer run. They got to sort this out.